Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back. In today's video, we are teaming up with Chibitronics and I'm going to be creating a card that lights up using some of the supplies from Chibitronics as well as some stamps and dies from my favorite things. Now, I do want to start off the video by saying I am not that great with these. I love the lighting effect that they produce, but sometimes I struggle a tiny bit with creating the different circuits. I think I did okay on this card. I did have a few mistakes, but I wanted to share the process anyway and share how I make this little traffic signal. I'm going to make the little green light at the bottom of it shine green when we have this all put together. So I'm going to be using a green Chibitronics light and then we're going to create kind of a pull tab slider switch type thing. I saw this on the Chibitronics website and I really wanted to try this method of creating my circuit versus having like the push area on the card where you press down to activate the battery. So I'm going to share my process to pull this all together. So the first thing I've done is I have two white panels and I've cut both of them out with an A2 stitch rectangle stacks set to die, the largest one from that die set. I have my Chibitronic supplies ready to go, but I'm not going to use those quite yet because I do want to do some coloring on my scene. So what I did is I stamped a couple of trees and that traffic signal onto my panel. Those are going to be on the main layer of the card, so they're stamped right on that card front. And I'm going to take this really tiny hole punch that I have and I'm going to pop a hole right in the very bottom of that traffic signal. So where my green line is going to be I put a hole in there so that the light can easily shine through once we have it all put together. Now I'm going to quickly go through the coloring. It's just some really basic coloring. I'm adding some green colors to my trees and when I colored these trees specifically I just use the lightest color and color the entire tree and then just take my darkest color and go over the leaves to darken those up a bit. I'm just moving on to the little bear in the car image here so I am going to color him in with some warm grays and then do the car in some aqua colors, add a little bit of yellow to the headlights and then darken the wheels up with some darker gray color. And I stamped this one separately because I'm going to cut it out with my scissors so that we can layer it onto the road that we're going to add to the scene once we get that far into the card. All of these images were stamped with the extreme black hybrid ink so that I could easily color them with Copic markers with no problem with bleeding or anything like that. For the traffic signal, I colored in the red and yellow. I left the traffic signal gray. I'm not sure what color they are in other parts of the world, but in Canada, they're typically yellow. But I didn't really want that really bright yellow color on the signal area, so I decided to just leave that gray. And then what I did is I layered the first panel over top of the second panel and used a pencil to put a little tiny dot indicating where the hole is on the traffic signal. And this is going to let me know where I need to have the light positioned on the inside panel of this card, which you're never going to see because we're going to sandwich everything in between. So what I did is I just added that little dot. I know that's where the light's going to go. And now I'm just using a pencil and I'm kind of roughly drawing out where I want everything to be, the little light, the battery where I want the copper tape to run, and also the area where I'm going to create the little switch mechanism that we're going to pull on to activate the actual light. And you'll see as I go that I kind of move things around a tiny bit. I don't keep it exactly where I drew all of the lines. I just had that there kind of as a guide. So now it's time to create the circuit, and this is where I always kind of have a little bit of problems. I'm getting better every time I do it, so if you find that you struggle with these Chibitronics, I definitely recommend to keep trying and keep creating cards with them, because the more you do it, the better you get at it. So I started off my copper tape right from where the light's going to go, so you want to make sure that you have copper tape exactly where your light's going to be positioned, so that you can activate it at both ends of the circuit, so I know that it's going to overlap the little end there where I started. And now what I'm doing is I'm cutting a little opening into my panel. So I started with my copper tape and realized, oops, I forgot to cut the opening, so I need to do that first. So I'm just using a ruler and an X-Acto knife, and I'm just very quickly cutting a little split in there, and that's going to be where I'm going to create the little switch that's going to slide back and forth. And you don't have to be super precise with this. It just needs to be an opening. Like I mentioned before, you're never going to see any of this inside area. So it's probably going to look like a hot mess when you're done. But it is going to work to create the light effect, which is what we're going for. Now, if you can, it's best to keep the copper tape in one continuous piece. But I had a little bit of difficulty on this corner here, and I ended up having to rip it apart. But you just want to make sure if you do that, that you just overlap it really well to make sure that you don't have any breaks in your circuit. And I didn't realize until I was editing this video that I forgot to zoom back out from the coloring. So some of the stuff that I'm doing is going to go off screen. So I do apologize. I will try to explain as best as I can what I do when it goes off screen. So for this little part here, I just overlapped it with that first piece of copper tape, making sure that I have a nice, good connection. And then I just let it go down into that opening and I just folded it behind itself. So it's just going through that open slit that we cut out and then I just tucked it in behind. 
And then for the second piece that I'm working with here, I just started this one on the other side of that little slit. So I brought it up through the hole. I folded the copper tape down underneath of the panel so that it's nice and secure in that opening. And now I'm just following my diagram and bringing that copper tape up and around over to where the battery is going to be. Now I started to stick the tape all the way down onto the paper and realized that I needed to get the battery in place before I did that. So I did add that on there and then I'm just running the tape directly over top of it all the way to the other side and then I'm going to secure it on the cardstock on the other side of it. Now I also forgot to add the copper tape under the battery which is what I needed to do before I stuck this down. So I'm going to grab my second piece of copper tape which is going to create our negative portion of the circuit and I'm going to very carefully lift that up there and tuck it in underneath and then bring it right down to where the light is going to be. And I'm just making sure that I have the spacing correct so that the light is going to touch both the positive and the negative of the circuit that we've created. So I just made sure when I added the little light on there so you can see it's stuck on there now that I have the positive which is the longer end of that light lined up with the positive portion of the circuit and I have the negative lined up with the negative portion of the circuit and then that is going to make the light work when we bridge that gap in that little opening and have a continuous circuit running through that little green light is going to light up and light up our traffic signal. So as you can see, because we have that opening there, this is not going to work unless we have another piece of copper that's going to go into that opening. So I've created this little like W type thing and it's going to form an X shape. This is something that I learned off the Chibitronic website to create this little switch that we're going to add into that opening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put copper tape all the way around this little piece of paper here. Now it can be a little cumbersome at first trying to get it to work its way around. I figured out as I went easier ways to do it. I was trying to kind of do it mid-air and I found it was kind of difficult to get that tape to go around. And then I realized it was a lot easier to kind of lay the pieces down onto my desk while I was doing it and then press that tape down in. So you just want to add this to this piece until you have an X formation and you have the copper tape fully running all the way around that X shape. So once we have the tape fully wrapped around here, you can see that I have an X formation with this little piece of paper and that copper tape is fully running all the way around it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch two ends together and slide it into that opening. And when I do that, I can kind of open up both ends and I have this solid piece running along the back of the panel and the front. And when you slide it through that opening and that copper tape meets the area where the copper tape is separated, that completes the circuit and makes that light go. So it's a really cool way to be able to activate the light without having to actually press down on the battery. You can just kind of use a pull tab and pull it out to complete that circuit and make that light go on. So I have a little piece of paper here, cardstock, that I have die cut with a die from one of the blueprint sets just to create my little pull tab. And I've used my scissors to kind of figure out where I want this to be positioned. And I cut the end of it off so it's going to be the right size. And then I also put a very little foam square onto that circuit. That's what we're going to use to attach this little pull tab onto. I used the interactive label stamp set to stamp the word pull onto the tab and I made sure that I have this position so that the tab is going to always kind of stick out a tiny bit but we don't want it to go too far into the card so I'm just using some score tape here and I'm putting some onto this opening and I'm doing it on the front and back so I don't have any adhesive exposed and this is just creating a stopper so it stops that from fully sliding inside of the card and losing the tab in the process. Now I've jumped ahead here and I've added a bunch of foam tape to this panel. So you can see some of my foam tape is touching some of those copper circuits. That's completely fine. It's not going to affect that working. But you can see now when I pull on my little pull tab, when that copper meets the copper that we have on the base of the card, it activates the battery and makes our little light light up. So we have our completed circuit ready to go. So we just need to finish the front panel of the card so we can put everything together. To finish up the card front, I just added some little grassy hills with the Driston Hill stencil and some Distress Ink. I used the Open Road Dynamics and cut out a road that I colored in with Copic markers to give it a little bit of shading and dimension. And then I layered everything onto the card front. Now I took all of the adhesive off the inside of the card panel and I'm just layering this right on top. And because we cut it from the same die, it's the exact same size. And you can see now when I pull on this little pull tab, it pulls my little switch over to the copper area and it completely lights up that little traffic signal. So it is such a cool effect and I love how this turned out. Now because we do have that switch that we've put into that opening on the back of the panel as well, we do need to have this up off the card a tiny bit so that there is room for that to be able to pull in and out. So I did put some foam adhesive onto the back of the panel before adding it to my card base. You don't want to have too much foam adhesive though because you want to be able to make sure that that switch is making contact with the panel and the copper tape that you have on that panel. 
So that is going to finish our card for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that I kind of made sense as I was explaining how I put the circuit together. Thanks so much to Chibitronics for letting us create with these really fun products. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon.